Okay, tu. So kita proceed lagi for the second parts of the assignment. Uh, also from chapter seven relates with chapter nine and ten. Um, okay. Uh, the second objective of your country is to achieve price stability. And if you are unable to achieve price stability, we will have the problems of inflation or deflation. So you need to find the information about this. Uh, uh, the same country. Okay, you only need to choose one country and find both information about the employment and employment and also inflation of the country. So now let's try to understand what does it means by inflation. So inflation relates with price stability. Price stability means price are kept stable without any frequent changes. Okay. Actually price of a product, any types of product, goods and services must not change frequently if it constantly change for example this week the price of pen is 2 and 50 cent 3 and 50 cent next month uh, increase to 2 ringgit and 60 cent next proceed pass to another 2 or 3 months naik lagi sposit even though uh, the increase is insignificant but a sikit saja naik sposit sposit tapi the price keep changing it is not good why because when the price of the product increases, our purchasing power, kuasa beli kita, akan berkurang. Money kita, duit yang kita ada, akan kurang nilai dia. If for example, before you have inflation, before inflation, before the increase in overall price level of a pro, uh, of products inside a country, with 10 ringgit, you manage to survive for a day. 10 ringgit, you beli makanan, nasi ayam sayur dapat 5 ringgit. And then another 3 ringgit you spend for your top up. And another 2 ringgit you beli gula-gula. Enough for you to spend for the whole day. All of a sudden, due to inflation, nasi ayam sayur yang sama sekarang ni, dah tak sama harganya macam sebelumnya. Dia jadi 7 ringgit. But your money is still the same, it's 10 ringgit. Now, bila you spend to buy the nasi ayam sayur, you already spend 7 ringgit. The rest, you only have another 3 ringgit. Kalau nasi ayam sayur naik harga, of course, top up pun akan naik harga. You might not be able to purchase top up. Before this, you can purchase 3 types of good with 10 ringgit. Tapi now, due to inflation, your money is not available. You still have 10 ringgit same like before. But you cannot purchase as much as before. It is called reducing purchasing power. Inflation is not good. If government fail to achieve price stability, it will lead to inflation. Inflation means increase in overall price level. Harga barangan, keseluruhan barangan in the country increase. Itu baru kita katakan sebagai inflation. But, kalau cuma satu je barang naik harga, for example, you go to the kedai, and you normally go to the kedai and purchase good from that kedai. Okay, all of a sudden, pen yang naik harga. And then, kalau you tengok harga lain, gula ke, tepung ke, buku ke, semua harga sama. Cuma harga pen je naik. You tak boleh buat kesimpulan bahawa, at that current time, we have the problem of inflation. No, it's wrong. Because inflation will occur only when the overall price level, faham ke maksud? Overall. Increase in all price level. In, in the price level of all product inside the country. Sorry. Overall price level. Uh, so, bila you go to the kedai, harga pen naik, harga buku naik, harga tepung naik, harga telur naik, harga semua barang naik, then baru you boleh buat kesimpulan, ada inflation inside the country. And normally, inflation occurs due to the petrol price lah. Uh, sebab tu orang takut bila harga petrol ni naik Ataupun turun Turun orang tak takut Tapi the thing is Once it's naik It's hard for it uh, for it to come down Dia memang supaya nak turun balik dah Itu problem dia uh, Okay So apa kaitan harga petrol dengan harga barang meningkat ni Petrol adalah kos pengangkutan Every types of good Ada kos pengangkutan For example Bila you dah, you pergi long pen for example kan. After you have produced a pen, 
you will sell the pet, right? So throughout the Malaysia, your market. So dah hantar ke Perak, dah hantar ke Sabah, Sarawak. Semua tu memerlukan pengangkutan. So itu adalah kos pengangkutan. Perniaga tak akan hadap tu. So that transportation cost will be put inside the cost of the product. Ah, So bila harga transportation cost meningkat, automatically the price of the product will rise. Nak bagi awak senang lagi faham, for example kan, fisherman. Dulu dia kira ke laut, motor boat dia tu, boat dia kan, kena isi minyak. Ha, dulu RM100 cukup untuk penuhkan satu tank. All the sudden inflation, the price of the petrol increases. So, untuk penuh satu tank, sekarang ni bukan RM100 dah, dah jadi RM100. So, bila that cost untuk the fisherman, that increase. So, as a fisherman, bila your cost is increase, once you dah dapat ikan, you balik nak jual, you cannot sell this, uh, the fish the same price like before. Ikan kembung, ikan, ikan tenggiri semua tu yang you dapat. You tak boleh jual sama harga macam sebelumnya sebab kos you dah meningkat. You bukan buat amal. Automatically, harga ikan akan meningkat. So, when the price of the fish has increases, siapa-siapa yang beli ikan bila harga ikan tu mahal, for example, makcik nasi lemak yang beli ikan. Ikan tongkol, nampak nasi lemak. Nak buat nasi dagang, macam nasi dagang pun beli. Nak buat keropok. Bila harga ikan dah mahal, automatically, harga nasi lemak, harga nasi dagang, harga keropok pun akan naik. So, dia cangkit. Ah. So, dia bukan isu, alah, naik 20 sen je pun kira. Bukan banyak pun. Bukan macam tu. The issue, once the petrol price increases, the overall price level in the country will start to rise. Apa payah kalau harga barang naik? Biar je lah. Tak. It's not good. Why? Because the money we have now is not enough. The thing is, everybody has a fixed income. Kecuali lah kalau you entrepreneur, you berniaga, kalau you business bagus, banyaklah pendapatan you pada bulan tersebut, right? Tapi for, for example, macam saya lah, makan gaji kan? Government citizen, eh, government citizen pula. Government servant. Gaji saya is fixed. Every month I got the same amount. At the end of the year, next year, baru naik, harga, naik gaji. Itu pun kalau performance bagus, baru naik gaji. So basically, my income is the same. But, if every month, we have an increase in the price level, the same amount of income won't be able to sustain your cost of living. True problem. Yeah. Tak payah tengok gaji saya lah, maybe you tak nampak kesan pada saya. Uh, tapi cuba tengok. Orang yang gaji dia, uh, orang kata cukup-cukup makan je. For example, hard labor kan, buruh kasar. Gaji dalam uh, gaji minima je. Around thousand hundred, thousand two hundred. Anak ada tiga. So, bila ada inflation, what happen? Pampers naik harga, susu naik harga. Hantar anak tadi ke kos tadi kamu naik harga. Hantar anak pun pasuh, kos pengasuh pun naik harga. Everything start to rise. Salah income dia dah rendah. Bila the, uh, the price of all products start to rise, they will be very bad. Itu yang kita tak nak. It is expensive for you to live in the country when the inflation rate is too high. Okay? Uh, sebab itulah inflation ni is a problem. And inflation biasanya berlaku bila country ada Increase in economy. Uh, kita boleh tengok lah. Bila ekonomi meningkat, automatically, inflation rate akan naik sekali. Nanti saya akan explain bila kita masuk yang ketiga, economic growth. Okay, so, macam mana nak measure inflation rate? Inflation rate is measured based on average price. The objective of a country is to keep inflation rate below 4%. Even though inflation rate is not good, right? Saya kata, cost of living akan jadi mahal. Kita nak hidup dalam negara tu akan jadi expensive. Tapi kita tak nak jadi kosong. Dia sama macam unemployment tadi. Unemployment is natural rate is 4%. Same goes for inflation. The natural rate, the best rate for a country is 4%. It cannot be 0%. Kalau inflation rate 0%, meaning that the country has no development at all. It's not good also. Nanti kita tengok.
Okay. Inflation can reduce the purchasing power of consumer. Severe inflation may lead to income not rising as fast as prices, and the group that receive fixed income may become the losers as the ability to buy goods and services decreases. Uh, so, yang dapat fixed income, macam saya lah. Uh, dan ramai lagi kurungan yang dapat fixed income yang kerja dengan orang. Okay, we will become the losers because our ability to buy goods and services sekarang makin berkurang. Our purchasing power makin berkurang. Okay, so now kita relate dengan topik 9 and 10. Okay, ada further, info, uh, further explanation about inflation. Inflation is a continuous increase in general price level. Uh, so, bila you belajar micro hari tu, okay, you cuma belajar pasal price. Relationship between price and quantity. Right? Uh, so, uh, untuk you recall balik kan? Okay. Yang you belajar hari tu, you belajar pasal the relationship between Price and quantity. Oh, sorry, drawing a computer with Chantula. Okay. Alright. So now, bila kita masuk macro, dia tak jadi price dah. Dia akan jadi general price level. Harga barang kesemua sekali. Sebab itu kita belajar micro. Micro satu barang. Sebab itu kita tulis price je. Sekarang ni instead of price, dia akan jadi general Oh, this is very hard for me. Price level. Kita saya dah menyesal tak beli touch screen. <laughs> okay, short form dia adalah G P L uh -huh. Ok, general price level Ok Lepas tu dia kata uh, Inflation can reduce the purchasing power of money income Below 4% of inflation is considered price stability uh, Jadi awak akan lebih faham bila saya masuk uh, Objektif yang ketiga iaitu Economic growth Tapi tak apa, ok I visit sekejap Ok, kita tengok inflation dulu So how to measure inflation rate Kita ada satu index yang kita panggil dia Consumer Price Index. Lower risk. Yang dia bagi. Tapi awak bagi ikut 1 to 0 ni, dia tak ada calculation pun. Lower risk. Awak cuma perlu faham je. What, this, what does this index means? This index is the index that is used to measure inflation. Nak kira inflation, menggunakan index tersebut. And short form dia CPI. Okay. And dia ada CPI base year dan dia ada CPI current year. Current year. And also CPI base year. CY current year. CY base year. Sekiranya consumer price index untuk current year lagi besar daripada base year. Maksudnya tahun semasa. For example ada 2 tahun kan. 2019-2018. 2019 tu akan jadi current year. Tahun semasa. 2018 akan jadi base year. Tahun yang lama. So sekiranya tahun semasa lebih besar. CPI current tahun ke semasa lebih besar daripada CPI uh, base year Tahun yang lalu Dia menunjukkan bahawa negara tersebut ada inflation And the opposite Sekiranya CPI base year lagi kecil Daripada CPI current year It indicates deflation Terbalik kepada inflation, deflation Kita tengah ekonomi merudum Or a decrease in CPI GPL Inflation rate equals to CPI current year Minus CPI base year Times 100 Sorry, CPI current year minus CPI base year over CPI base year times 100. No worries, you don't need to calculate this. Okay, so let's look at the degree of inflation. Okay, so, uh, actually I already adjust this, I'm not, ha not sure what happened here. Okay, so kita ada degree of inflation, ada four altogether. First of all, it's moderate. Moderate uh, is around 3% of inflation. This is acceptable inflation because this inflation is to, is to stimulate investment. Okay, it's good for a country to have this type of inflation. Why? Because bila uh, saya bagi tahu dah, inflation menunjukkan bahawa negara tu tengah mencuba untuk membangun. Ah, okay, so it's good. Okay, well, 
Uh, yang kedua, kita ada degree dia creeping which is 4 to 5% of inflation. Dia naik slow-slow. 4.1, 4.2 until 5%. It arises but slowly and this inflation is the common types of inflation to the developed and developing country. Untuk negara membangun dan negara maju. So, dah cerita ini adalah common types of inflation untuk semua country lah. Dalam 4 ke 5%. Natural rate dia lah ni. Okay. And then, kita ada uh, hyperinflation. Hyperinflation is not good. Why? Sebab inflation rate rises greater than 50%. Maksudnya harga barang naik lebih daripada 50%. Bukan untuk satu barang eh. Semua jenis barang dalam negara tersebut. All the sudden, the price of the product melonjak dengan sangat tinggi. The price of the product is very expensive. This thing occurs in Iraq. Lepas Amerika berjaya kulitkan Saddam Hussein. Nah, siapa yang nak buat Iraq tu? Boleh cerita pasal hyperinflation. And then kita ada stagflation. Uh, this is the worst case of inflation. Why? Because it shows that the economy has no growth but still we have the problem of inflation. Sepatutnya kalau ada inflation rate, maksudnya negara tengah mencuba untuk membangun. Tapi sekarang ni, kita ada inflation rate yang tinggi, tapi negara tak membangun pun. Maksudnya macam gini, rakyat hidup dalam negara tu mahal. Cost of living is expensive, cost hidup mahal. Tapi negara bukan maju maju pun, negara meruduk. Oh, this one is bad. So this is the decree of inflation. Okay. Next, let's go for the type of causes of inflation. Okay, there are two causes of inflation. Penyebab kepada inflation. Yang tadi tu yang saya kata petrol tu, tu adalah broadly lah. Uh, normally lah, inflation being caused by the increase in petrol price. So, this is theoretically, ada dua yang paling prominent. Tapi for the country yang you choose, maybe ada yang lain lagi. Sebab tak semua kita cover in our syllabus. So, it, uh, you cari je. Apakah reason inflation berlaku dalam negara yang you pilih tu? Okay, so yang kita belajar ni kita ada dua. Demand pull inflation. Bila kita sebut demand, bila that it is caused by the buyer. Uh, inflation yang disebabkan se oleh seorang pembeli. And cost, uh, siapa yang buat barang? Cost ni adalah untuk orang yang buat barang iaitu seller. Uh, so, kita ada dua golongan kan in the market, the buyer and the seller. So, satu inflation yang disebabkan oleh buyer and the other one is the inflation that is caused by the seller. Uh, so, inflation ni akan mempengaruhi demand pool inflation akan menyebabkan demand curve berubah. While cost pulls inflation, cost kan berkenaan seller kan? Seller is about the supply curve. Supply curve yang akan berubah. Okay. So, in terms of demonstration, okay, So, saya padam yang ni. Because I don't want this. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have two kan? Satu supply curve Satu demand curve Kalau ke bawah ni Ini adalah demand curve Yang ke atas adalah Supply curve Okay So Before this Ini kita panggil price saja kan So sekarang ni jadi General Price level GPL Okay Alah, sorry
so ini akan jadi quantity ok kat sini kan kita tulis supply ss ini akan kita tulis demand right ok untuk uh, makro instead of kita panggil supply curve ataupun demand curve dia akan tukar nama dia kepada as as mean aggregate demand ok here as Oh, I did not give the def uh, the video. Ah, uh, it's okay, it's okay. I'll give it here. It has been aggregate aggregate supply. Sorry, sorry. It has right. Dia dah tak ada dah nama dia supply curve macam tu. Itu adalah untuk micro. Ha, sekarang ni akan jadi aggregate supply. Sebab kita nak tengok secara makro. So kita nak tak nak tengok supply curve on their own. Individually kita nak tengok supply as a whole. The whole country. Aggregate tu maksudnya keseluruhan. Ha, so nama dia akan bertukar jadi aggregate supply. Well for this one. Instead of demand curve. Dia akan jadi aggregate demand ah uh, kasi dia akan jadi aggregate demand sebab kita nak tengok demand for the whole country okey so tu sebab tu you nampak ASAD tu the concept dia still sama lah Aggregate supply representing the seller. Aggregate demand representing the buyer. Okay. Going back. Okay. So, kita tengok demand pool inflation dulu. Sebab kita ada two types of uh, uh, causes of inflation. Right? Demand pool inflation. So, demand pool inflation ni. It occurs when aggregate demand increases. Causes it to exceed aggregate supply. Uh, permintaan meningkat dan menyebabkan dia meng Men melebihi penawaran uh, ok and kenapa aggregate demand boleh meningkat pertama sebab increase in consumption perbelanjaan yang kedua increase in investment and yang ketiga increase in government spending and increase in net export So, this is the reason. C stand for consumption, I for investment, G for government spending, ataupun nama lain dia, government expenditure. And X minus M adalah net export. Net export ni maksudnya export dah ditolak kepada import. Export represented by X. Import represented by M. It's okay. Nanti you akan belajar detail in chapter 2. So that you know, chapter 2 pula, chapter 8. So that you know that, ada empat reason kenapa aggregate demand boleh meningkat. Pertama, bila perbelanjaan household meningkat. Kedua, bila investment of the firm meningkat. Bila ketiga, bila the government is spending much money. And yang keempat, bila the foreign sector, the net export also increases ataupun salah satu daripada this component increases dia akan menyebabkan AD kita shifted bila dia shift dia akan pergi ke kanan shift to the left eh, to the right shift outward to the right ataupun outward dan dia akan exit the aggregate supply curve So, this is what happened. So, asal dia, dia macam ni. 
table the archive shift ke sini parallel shift okey so saya buat dash lah okey so AD1 Ah, ni adalah shifting dia So equilibrium kita berubah Asalnya equilibrium kat sini Sekarang ni equilibrium kat sini Okay The point of equilibrium changes Ah, Asalnya equilibrium kat sini Sekarang ni <coughs> Zero lah, original Equilibrium akan berubah kat sini So what happened there Okay Quantity also changes Okay Ini adalah Q0 Ini adalah Q1 And also The price also changes. Okay. So, this is the original price. So, kita tulis kat sini. GPL. Zero. And this one will be GPL. One. Okay, so there will be an increment in price. So, bila increment in price tu lah yang kita panggil sebagai inflation. Nikat kan? Ha. Peningkatan ni lah, GPL yang meningkat ni lah yang kita panggil sebagai inflation. Tapi, peningkat yang peningkatan ni yang awal ni Okey. Jadi okey. Naik pertama kali ni okey. Sebab kita kata every country must increase in order for the country to attain the economic growth. Sebab kita nak output penghasilan barang meningkat dalam negara. So that negara kita kita boleh tahu negara kita big efficient. Ha. So ini adalah Poin yang terbaik for a country lah. A Q1 ni. Maksudnya negara dah achieve matlamat yang pertama which is full employment. Ini yang kita nak dekat Q1. So, ni 
Naik ke atas ni Daripada GPL kosong kepada GPL 1 ni Jadi kita panggil acceptable inflation This is good Orang dalam slide pun dia kata Acceptable inflation Naik yang pertama kali tu Acceptable inflation Needed to achieve full level of employment Kita nak achieve full employment So kenapa tak pakai Q kenapa Y Sebab dalam ekonomi bila Total output bila jadi makro Dia boleh jadi guna Y So tak perlu confuse Tak perlu risau Afterwards Sebab total output ni bermaksud Generation of income Income kan kita Y kan So Y also means Q Uh, so you boleh letak kat sini This one instead of Q It's also bilik Y uh, Sama je Okay But AD ni Bila dia dah start naik Dia payah nak turun Manusia kan Permintaan barang kan Bila dia ada duit They will start to purchase more and more and more The problem is Okay AS Dah full lah Full employment Maksud full employment ni Land labor capital entrepreneur yang ada dalam ekonomi negara tu Dah digunakan sebaik mungkin Mustahil dah kita tak boleh nak uh, uh, Produce more than that This is the maximum we can produce dekat Q1 So AS ni dia tak boleh terus naik dah Dia impossible lah This is the maximum they can go at Q1 So AS ni Lepas ni Dia tak akan meningkat dah Dia akan jadi Street ha, AS ke <coughs> Tak apalah saya letakkan stand Hopefully you faham AS ke dia akan jadi straight dah Dia tak akan jadi uh, Upward sloping dah Sebab this is the Maximum we can go However, AD fail to stop. Demand manusia ni, payah nak berhenti. Once they have money, they will keep purchasing. So, what happened there? The aggregate demand keep increasing. Naik satu level lagi. Kepada AD 2. So, bila dia naik macam tu, What happened there? Dekat mana dia bersilang dengan uh, AS yang baru tu Bersilang dengan AD yang baru tu Okay Kita akan dapat satu lagi kat situ This is The GPL 2 So, meningkat lagi ke atas ni Naik lagi satu level ke atas ni This is not This is what we call the Demand pull inflation Supposedly Demand tu berhenti sampai sini je Sekejap eh, saya betulkan sekejap ni This is when you play with things Ah, tak apalah, it's okay Because I'm drawing, uh, using the PC eh? It's very hard for me to adjust this one Okay Our video will be like forever lah Kalau tunggu saya settle buat benda ni So tak apalah, halal ni lah Okay Ah uh, So my point here Bila dia dah naik ke atas Macam tu Your Increment in general price level ni Inilah yang kita panggil Demand pool inflation ha, Kat sini ni Dia naik lagi satu level ni Inilah problem of demand pool inflation Okay So you can see the explanation here You can read on your own Same like I explain Okay So this is the inflation that is caused by the buyer 
All right. So let's let's go for the cost push inflation. For the cost push inflation, this is the inflation that is caused by the seller. Okay. So why does this cost push inflation occur? It occurs if the cost of production increases, causes the AS to decrease. Uh, tadi kalau AD, AD increase kan, the shift to the right, right? Outward. Tapi untuk cost push inflation, AS kena decrease baru harga meningkat. Ah, okay, dia lain, dia berbeza. Okay, so let's look at the diagram. Same, you have the ADs. Aggregate ni ke bawah, aggregate supply ke atas. So, kalau you buat AS ni shift ke sini, letak kat bawah, equilibrium dapat kat sini kan? So, harga kena bawah ni. Bila harga ke bawah makin rendah, itu bukan inflation. Inflation mesti GPL makin meningkat ke atas. So, AS kena shift inward. But shift to the left. Barulah harga akan meningkat. Barulah berlaku dia problem of inflation. So, kenapa... AS kurang, berkurang. Yeah? AS is about the seller. Kenapa production level of a product decreases? Uh, so, this is the reason. Pertama, price of input increases. As a seller, kan? You want to produce product. You kena menggunakan input, kan? Kena ada resources, the raw material. So, your raw material, the price of your raw material increases. For example, you bought cake, harga tepung naik, harga gula naik. Harga telur naik. So, bila the price of your raw material meningkat, dengan modal yang sama, you cannot produce much. That's why your aggregate supply akan berkurang. So, bila barang berkurang, automatically harga barang tu akan melonjak naik. Itu adalah inflation yang disebabkan oleh cost push. Another reason because the labor cost. Uh, kerajaan bagi gaji minima kan. Uh, so, sekarang ni, you kena bayar gaji pekerja you instead of 800 sebulan, 1100 jadi. So, it's expensive. So, bila labor cost increases, automatically, you akan kurangkan jumlah penghasilan. Yang kedua, disebabkan natural disasters. So, natural disasters ni, macam mana alam, for example, flood, uh, forest, fire, tsunami, what, whatsoever, just kalau ni, uh, apa, virus ni pun, boleh kita katakan sebagai natural disasters. Dia akan deplete the natural resources. COVID-19 ni apa natural resources ni? Natural resources apa yang deplete? Human lah. People are dying. The labor. Ha. So, bila one of our resources is decreasing, berkurang, bila that, we cannot produce as much as before. That's why aggregate supply shifting inward. The last reason is because the producer purposely increase the price in order to uh, to create uh, to increase profit by creating artificial shortage. Kadang-kadang tu, producer pun main order duri juga. Dia buat apa? Dia sembunyikan barang. Dia berlaku lah. Sometimes. Uh, sebab tu kadang-kadang you tengok. Selalu buat survey. Untuk. Okay, some producer. Uh, dia macam saja tau. Sembunyikan barang. Uh, so, kita boleh tengok masa ni. Dia sentiasa berlaku timing. Bila negara ada event something, for example, macam pusing perayaan, tiba-tiba uh, kita tengok, uh, tak ada gula. Padahal tak ada masalah pun. Mana ada, ada kemarau ke, tebu tak boleh tanam ke, tak ada. Tapi tiba-tiba tak ada gula. Itu ha, maksudnya, producer gula berpakat. Dia orang sembunyikan bekalan gula. So, bila ada shortage, ada kekurangan gula dalam pasaran, AS kan akan shifting inward, automatically harga barang meningkat. So, bila harga gula meningkat tu, dia orang akan dapat untung lah. Ha, tu, tu yang purposely dia orang nak dapat tu. Tapi, bila dia orang buat macam tu, what happen dah, dia akan menyebabkan the problem of cost push inflation. So, dia tak ada double shifting macam uh, uh, demand pull inflation. Kalau demand pull inflation, kita ada dua kan. Double shifting, right? Nak sekali okay, nak sekali lagi tak okay. Ha, tapi yang ni sekali je. Very simple. Okay, so this is the explanation. You can read on your own. Alright. So, uh, effect of inflation. Kita ada gain this. Ada orang yang akan gain from inflation. Especially those businessmen lah. Uh, Perniaga lah. Uh, 
sebab bila inflation the price of the product increases right so they will have a higher profit a higher profit from the rising in price and also property owners uh, semua sedilah property owners for example pemilik rumah tanah yang ada property ni akan dapat untung berganda-ganda sebab property rise uh, property prices increase and shareholder also lah uh, pemegang saham Uh, sebab bila company got more more profit sebab the price of the product increase with that they will get more profit so the shareholder will receive higher dividend and also the debtor uh, debtor ni apa pula berhutang uh, kita assume debtor ni debtor yang berhutang tanpa extra uh, extra payment lah for example saya ada duit RM5,000 saya bagi pinjamkan kat kawan saya uh, kawan saya tu nak, nak beli uh, tak buat kolam untuk anak dia saya asalnya RM5,000 tu saya nak beli TV yang besar tu tapi sebab saya kata tak apalah TV saya pun okay. lagi saya bagi pinjam dulu ke dia, so kawan saya kata tak apa, uh, tahun depan saya bayar, eh, dia bayar RM5,000 uh, tu the thing is uh, bila dia nak bayar tahun depan tu uh, dia bayar RM5,000 kat saya, betul tapi dah tahun depan tu dah ada inflation harga TV yang saya nak tu dah tak bernilai lima ribu dah. Dah berikat dah harga TV tu. Kita assume teknologi tak berubah lah sekarang ni. Eh? Uh, so what happened afterwards? With the same 5,000, I cannot buy my TV. So maksudnya lima ribu saya tu dah tak bernilai seperti dahulu. So saya rugi. Tapi dia sebagai debtor, penghutang saya, dia untung lah sebab dia bayar walaupun dia bayar lima ribu sama macam dia pinjam sebelumnya. Tapi lima ribu yang dia bayar tu lagi kurang nilainya berbanding tahun sebelumnya. Uh, the losers adalah those who uh, receive fixed income uh, Orang yang uh, ada income tetap lah Macam saya kata tadi yang kerja dengan orang Ataupun orang yang pension lah Ada income yang tetap kan eh? uh, So this person Sebab income tak naik Walaupun uh, uh, the price of the product increases So dia akan rasa terbobat Holder of government bonds Fixed deposit Holder of life insurance policy etc So bila government bond ni eh, Saham kerajaan Dia Uh, return dia tetap Tak kisahlah ada inflation ke tak ada inflation ke Dia tak fluctuate tau So bila dia dah state You akan dapat return banyak tu Banyak tu je lah uh, Tak kisahlah masa tu ekonomi macam mana So siapa Dia kata return Kalau you pegang government bond Sama kerajaan You dapat return uh, 5% So that's You you akan dapat 5% lah Tapi masa tu ada inflation So 5% you dapat tu adalah rendah lah Tak tinggi lah uh, Tak seperti sebelumnya Sebab nilai tu tak se Uh, dah tak bernilai because inflation menyebabkan mata wang kita jatuh ok and creditor ni yang saya kata saya lah tadi but uh, uh, my real value of money decreases I got 5,000 tapi uh, 5,000 saya tak sebernilai sebelumnya ok so what should you do is you should find the inflation uh, uh, rate of the country of your chosen country uh, uh, elokannya cari trend juga uh, within 10 years macam mana trend inflation negara pilihan awak sama eh mesti pilih negara yang sama ada employment negara yang sama inflation pun negara yang sama ok cari yang prominent yang inflation uh, dalam 10 tahun tu cari kat mana tahun yang rate dia paling tinggi sekali uh, then you cerita what happened at that current year what happened in the country kenapa dia ada inflation you see asset the reason why inflation occurs and what are the effect to the people there the losers the gainers the effect ok tak sebenarnya sama dengan dota saya uh, tapi itu yang kita nak challenge dia you need to find the uh, accurate information to put in your notes uh, in your assignment so that you can get your marks ok so that's it thank you